Moving on, when we put all of that together, so uh, follow with me here. So I'm going to stick. Um, so first, I want to describe this one on the right, and then I'm going to describe this one on the left. So as I go up in energy, right, I recognize that technically I would also have a 1s and a 1s down here in the core. Um, but of course, for molecules, those aren't going to make um, any bonds, right? It's my valence shell that are making my chemical bonds, right? All the same, if I go up and describe the 2s and the 2pz linear combinations that we just talked about, we can see if I combine a 2s and a 2s, the 1 sigma g is the lower bonding energy, the 1 sigma u is the, is the upper anti-bonding energy, okay? Now, when I get up into the 2p level, here, and then pay attention to this, for more, this is for more than half-filled P block, okay? For more than half-filled P block. I'm going to get to my um, little description here. Yes, okay. So when the P block is um, really, I should say, half-filled or more, the 2 sigma G ends up being the lowest in energy. And remember, that 2 sigma G is created from linear combinations of 2 PZ. And so here I've got the 2 sigma G way down here. And as it turns out, the 2 sigma U is the highest in energy up here. Also, I can make pi bonds from those off-axis electrons. And so, again, for more than half-filled or for half-filled and more, we would now get the 1 pi x u and the 1 pi y u. And what's important to note is four electrons can go in this level, right? We know two electrons in each orbital, but those count as two different orbitals. So I can get four electrons in this level and I can get four electrons in this level. Keep that in mind, okay? Um, and of course, the 1 pi xg and the 1 pi yg, remember the g's, are the antibonds for pi. So now, as it turns out, for less than half filled, we can get s and p mixing. Um, so let's see, s, p, mixing can occur here for less than half filled. Um, and so the result of that is it actually greatly reduces the energy of the pi bonds. I'm going to show you that in a moment. It's not that the two sigma g energy increases. Rather, it's that now this S and P mixing really reduces the energy of those pi bonds um, because of there being less interference in that internuclear zone. And so now what ends up happening is um, the, the pi's, the pi bonds get lowered way down there. So we got one pi x u and one pi y u. Um, and then it goes two sigma g, then one pi x g, one pi y g, then two sigma u. Okay. So let's do an example. So here's oxygen. And so we know that each oxygen contributes um, let's see, quick uh, flash. So we know that each oxygen is going to give us six electrons each, right? If I look at my oxygen, um, you know, atomic energy diagram. So it's 2s and 2p, and there's one, two, three, four. So each oxygen is going to bring six valence electrons to the party. So I'll, I'll populate those over here in my AOs. Okay. So I'm just going to put them all here so I know that I've got to use them. And so now that means I'm going to have 12 electrons that I occupy that I bring down into the MOs. So uh, I've got one, two, three, four to take care of for the 2S. And there's one, two, three, four. Okay, great. So that one sigma G, one sigma U is all blocked up. So now what about um, this lower level? Well, oxygen is more than a half filled P block. And because it's more than a half filled P block, the two sigma G is lower. Okay. 
and I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons that I can populate in here. And so that's gonna go one, two, and then I'm gonna be able to put four in this one pi u, right? And then that leaves me two more in the one pi g. So now what about the bonding order of oxygen for this? Well, one half times, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bonding electrons, and I've got one, two, three, four anti-bonding electrons. Eight minus four is four times one half is two, and we know oxygen has a double bond with two lone pairs, and as we shall, we even can see right here, technically O2 is a triplet ground state. Two unpaired electrons, so it's a triplet state. Um, we could also call it a di radical. And also we recognize that oxygen is paramagnetic because it has those two upspin electrons. So if the electrons were spin correlated, then any magnetic moment um, would be canceled. Okay. So we learn a lot from these MO diagrams. We can predict a lot about the chemistry of things. And the fact that this is a triplet diradical state, it makes O2 extremely reactive, which hopefully you remember as chemists, or you know as chemists, O2 is very reactive. Okay. So let's look at the series of simple homonuclear diatoms. Um, and oh my, wait, no, I lied to you guys. I knew I had that backwards. So I'm sorry about that. S and P mixing can occur. Um, and it's the S and P mixing that greatly lowers the two sigma G orbital. I knew that that didn't make sense when it came out. So S and P mixing can occur lowers to sigma G. Okay, apologies there. So now if we look at Li2, Be2, B2, etc., right? So you can see for the most part, the um, as we get to more electronegative elements, those bonds um, lower in energy. And you can also see this two sigma G, right? This is what really, really starts dropping down um, as we go into the more than half filled, okay, situation. Um, and so as we populate electrons through, what I want you to keep in mind is we want to really keep track of where we put all of these things. So one pi u, one pi g, two sigma g, two sigma u, because where I'm going next with this thing is uh, describing polar bonds and how we do molecular term symbols, okay? So that will be in the next video. So that wraps it up for homonuclear diatomics. So be able to construct these molecular orbital diagrams. Um, where I'm going next is describing heteronuclear diatoms, okay? All right, folks, I'll see you later.